I posted this on my Instagram story and my DMs were pretty much flooded with people begging me to do a tutorial. But instead of doing a tutorial, this is just going to be a 12 minute video of me sending no. this gift to every last one of those DMs. <laughs> I'm just playing, I got you. I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm not even old enough to remember when shit looked like this, but it does look pretty damn cool. So the answer is yes. Let's do it. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jerron with JeronSupply.com, where I help you design smarter, not harder. Let's learn how to make this VHS text effect in Photoshop. Make sure you stick to the end because I'm only showing you how to do a few variations of this effect, but there's actually a ton of cool variations that you can do with this setup. So I actually made a template file that you can use to get all of these cool effects in just a few clicks and it's free. Yes, you heard me right. And later in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can download that template for free because I got y'all. Okay, let's do this. So the first thing you wanna do is create a document for this effect. I'm going to be using a 20 by 16 inch document at 300 DPI. You can just copy these settings. I'll go ahead and click create here. Okay, I'm a dumbass. I actually made this 20 by 16 pixels. Make sure that's inches. Okay, boom, we're good. So now let's make our background black. And now we actually need a, another document. So we'll go up to file, new, and we wanna make this one in pixels the width at nine and the height at five. Also make sure the resolution is at 72 DPI and not 300. Let's go ahead and click create here. Zoom in all the way to this tiny, tiny nine by five pixel document. And the first thing we wanna do is take our ellipse tool right here. So that's in the shapes tool down to ellipse. And now let's draw an ellipse out on this document. You wanna make it pretty elongated vertically. I'm gonna go with about three by five pixels here. That's looking perfect. Now all you wanna do is duplicate this ellipse two times using command J on your keyboard and move them to the right until you fill out the document. Now we can delete the background layer in this document and we're gonna take the first ellipse, open up the layer styles and just check off every box in the channels except for red. So I'll check off green and I'll check off blue. And I actually forgot to mention this, but you wanna make sure all these ellipses are white. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn these all white by doing command backspace on my keyboard. You just have to make sure your colors are at the default black and white by pressing D on your keyboard to reset it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make all these ellipses white. And as you can see checking off all the boxes in the channels except for red made this layer a pure red now we're going to do something similar for the rest of the ellipses we'll open up the middle one and check off every box except blue and that'll give us a pure blue color for the middle ellipse and then last up you already know what to do go ahead and check off all the boxes except green for the last ellipse and now we have a pretty cool and simple rgb sort of pixel layout here and this is going to help us create that vhs effect so now all you have to do is command a on your keyboard to select the whole canvas go up to edit define pattern we're going to make this into a pattern just name this whatever you want i'm going to name it rgb6 and now you have this pattern saved into your patterns library which you can see here if my big ass head is not blocking it so let me just move this to the middle of the screen and you can see we now have that rgb pattern in our patterns library i have a few here because i made a couple variations earlier if you don't know where to find the patterns dialog by the way just go up to window and check on the patterns down here and it'll show up in your document so i'm going to bring that back to where i usually have it in this neat little box down here and now we can go back to our original document we're gonna make a new empty layer in this document and convert that to a smart object so right click on that empty layer convert to smart object let's open that up by double clicking on the thumbnail and now let's fill this empty layer with black so just make a black background for this document you can go ahead and do that with alt backspace on your keyboard that's gonna fill it with your primary color then let's press T on our keyboard to select the type tool and now we can just type out our text you can use any font you want but I like how Helvetica looks for this effect. All right, cool. Next up, set the fill of this layer to zero. We're gonna drag that all the way down. Then open up the layer styles for this layer and add a drop shadow. I'm gonna reset that to default and I'm gonna make sure the blend mode is normal. The opacity is 100 and the color is on white. Then we want the distance and the spread all the way down at zero. And we wanna uncheck this box. This is very important. Uncheck layer knocks out drop shadow. And this is gonna bring our text back into the document. And now we can play with the size slider here to control sort of the blur effect on this text. So that's a cool little live blur effect. I'm gonna keep the size at around 20 here and I'll press okay on this. Apologies if you hear this absolute storm that's going on outside right now. Uh, pretty heavy rain down here in Miami. But anyway, let's now put this text in a group by doing command G on our keyboard. 
that's gonna put it in a neat little group for us. And on this group, we're gonna throw on some layer style. So double click that. And first up, we have a color overlay. We're gonna set the color of this to a slightly off-white, sort of grayish color here. So I'm going around 86 uh, luminance for this white or gray here. And I'll press okay on that. And then we wanna add a drop shadow to this. So go ahead and click on a drop shadow. I'm gonna reset this one to default. We're gonna make the color of this a nice blue, pretty saturated blue. I'm gonna go all the way up here. Press OK, and we're gonna set the distance to 180. Let's turn the spread and the size all the way down, and the only thing we wanna play with is the distance here. I'm gonna set this to around 10. Then we're gonna duplicate this drop shadow by clicking on the little plus icon here. We're gonna set the angle of this duplicate to zero and set the color to a nice yellow here. And that's gonna get us a cool little sort of faint chromatic aberration on this text. We're gonna go ahead and press OK on the layer styles for this. Almost done here. Now let's close this group and add on that pattern overlay that we created earlier. So go ahead and click that that pattern from your library. It's gonna automatically create a clipping mask. I'm just gonna undo that. I'm gonna set the scale of this pattern to about 200. So just double click that and change the scale to 200. And we're gonna set the blend mode of this to overlay. Cool, you can already see where we're going. This is looking pretty nice already, but let's really dial in this effect. So all right here, let's save this smart object to update it in our parent document. Let's go back to our parent document now. And the first thing we wanna do is add a box blur to this smart object. So go ahead and go up to filter, blur, box blur. And we wanna set this to something small, like around four pixels. I'll press okay on that. Then duplicate the small object with command J. Go back up to filter, blur, and we're gonna throw a Gaussian blur on this of about 40 to 60 pixels. I'm gonna go with 40 here. Actually, I like my blur. Let's go with 50. And I'm gonna start naming these layers so I don't get confused. So I'm gonna name this one the base and the one we just Gaussian blurred. I'm gonna name that Gaussian blur. Then let's go back to our original small object here and duplicate that with command J and bring it on top of this Gaussian blur. I'm gonna name this one RGB. Now let's go into the layer styles of this and uncheck the blue channel here. Let's press okay on that. And now we can nudge this to the left or to the right to get a cool little extra chromatic aberration effect on our text here. So you can nudge this just using the arrow keys on your keyboard to move it left or right. But before I do that, I wanna nudge the Gaussian blur a little bit. So I'm gonna actually just move this up into the right to get us more of a fading effect on the left and bottom edges of this text here. And also create this nice little glow coming off the top right or sides of this text. And then I can go back to our RGB layer and nudge that left to right for a little more chromatic aberration on the text. Now let's go back to this Gaussian blur layer. We're gonna duplicate that with Command J and bring it on top of all of our layers. And we're gonna set the blend mode of this layer to exclusion, that's all the way down here. It's getting a little funky now, but just trust me. Uh, we could keep the opacity of this at 100 or turn it down a little bit to something like 60. I'm gonna keep it at around 80 for now. And I'm also gonna nudge this layer a bit up to the left or something like that. You could just play with this till you find something you like. Also, I meant to mention this, but you can go ahead and go down to the first Gaussian blur layer we did and set the opacity to around 60. That's going to help us get a smoother effect on the final image. So go ahead and set that to 60. And then let's go back down to our original base layer here. We're going to duplicate that again and bring it all the way on top of all of our layers here. And we're going to throw on an emboss effect to go up to filter, stylize, and then emboss. You can honestly play around with these settings as much as you like. I like keeping the amount all the way on 100 and the height anywhere from 10 to 30. I'm going to go with around 16 here. And I'm going to change the angle to something like zero or 180. We can just play around with this. We can come back to it if we want, since this is a smart object. And I'll set this layer to overlay. Then we can knock the opacity down a chunk. I'm going to turn it down to about 40. Then let's just duplicate this box blur on the emboss layer. And we do that by holding down Alt on our keyboard and clicking and dragging on this box blur to bring it above the emboss. And now we have another box blur on top of all these other effects. And boom, now I'm going to nudge this layer around until I find a nice little spot for it that kind of fits with the rest of the text. Right there looks pretty good. And now now we have the base for this effect. You can go back in and dial in some of these settings a bit more to get more of a tuned up effect. So I'm gonna go down to the second Gaussian blur layer here, the one that we have set to exclusion. I'm gonna open up the blur here and we can play with this until we find a spot for it that we like. You can go up or down with this until you find a pretty cool effect that suits whatever look you're going for. And you can also play with the opacity of this exclusion layer for a bit of a different effect on the final image. And one thing I also like to do is add some color to this exclusion layer. So we can do that with Command U on our keyboard. That's gonna bring up the hue slash saturation panel. We can go ahead and click on colorize. We can also just start moving some of the layers around to the left, up or to the right, to sort of get a different sort of embossed look on the text here. So here I'm just moving the RGB layer. We can see this creates quite a different effect 
effect once we start moving it around. Same thing with the Gaussian blur layer down here. We could change the direction of that nice little blue glow that we got going on in the back of this. You can also just go ahead and turn off this exclusion layer if you want more of a simple streamlined effect. But I'm gonna keep that on because this really starts to come together once we start adding complementary effects like noise and a pattern overlay to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all of these layers in a group and I'm gonna name that VHS effects. Then I wanna bring back that pattern that we had before. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the document. I'll set the scale up again to 200. Then we can set the blend mode of this layer to either screen or vivid light and start playing with the opacity to just bring in some of that detail that you would see obviously on a screen or TV with that little RGB pattern that we got going on here. And of course, you already know what we have to add next. It's some noise. So let's go ahead and create a new layer here. Do shift backspace on our keyboard, fill that with 50% gray, then go up to filter camera raw filter you know all the way down to the effects panel and camera raw open that up and now we can play with the grain the size and the roughness of the grain now let's just set this layer to either overlay or soft light depending on how drastic of an effect you want now we got some really nice grain ingrained onto this effect we can also add a selective color adjustment on top of everything it's going to let us play with the colors a bit more so something i like to do is go to the yellows and just turn the yellow dial up a bit the magenta dial up a bit and the cyan dial down that's going to bring a bit more orange and red into the yellows of this we can also go down to the blues and start playing with the black value to affect the luminance of the blue glow here and start introducing pretty much color variants by playing with the other sliders here if that's something you want to do so here Here's the settings that I chose for that. And here's a before and after of that selective color adjustment. Very slight adjustments. So here's the before and here's the after. Just a little bit more color variance to tighten up the effect. Now you might've noticed that you can get some varied results with this setup. So you're totally free to play around and get some cool different effects. Like I said, you can start moving around these layers or even turn off the exclusion layer entirely. Something you can also play around with is by going back into that smart object and playing with the luminance of the color overlay here. So if I go and make this a darker gray, something around 50, a neutral gray, we're gonna get more of a sort of sharpened and dimmed effect on this text once we save the smart object. So this is around a 50 gray. I'm gonna go ahead and save this to show you the different effect that we can get. So this is what the effect looks like with the color overlay on around a neutral 50 gray. And this is what it looked like around an 85 gray. So a pretty different effect here. We can also even turn that color up. So let's go back into the smart object and turn the color to more of a 95 gray. And this is what it looks like on that 95 gray compared to the 50 gray compared to the 85 gray. Now you can also just change the color entirely. So if you go back into the smart object, I'm gonna create a new color overlay for this. I'm gonna turn this into a nice sort of melt orange here. Press okay on that and save the smart object. We get this really, really cool faded color effect on our text here. And we could turn on and off this exclusion layer to get a very look and even move it around and whatnot. We can also move around the RGB layer for a bit more or less chromatic aberration on the text. We can even turn that off entirely for more of a faded sort of motion blurred look. I'm going to change the text back to white here. We can even take this exclusion layer, put it one layer down below the RGB layer and do command I on our keyboards to invert. And now we have this insanely cool sort of 90s, 2000s TV commercial look. Really, really fun stuff. Now you can play around with this all you want, but like I said, I created a template with all these cool different effects that you can download and use for free. And all you have to do to get it is send me a picture of your credit card. No, okay, your social security number. All right, come on, for real. Go on to Instagram, head to the account Duran Supply. I'll pop it up on screen here and I'll also put that in the description. Go ahead and follow that account if you've been enjoying this video so far or if you've learned anything. And of course, if you want this template. And then just DM the word VHS or sequence of letters, not a word, whatever. But anyway, DM that account the letters VHS and you'll be sent a download link to the VHS text effect template. Now, I wanna go over how the template works real quick and show you what kind of effects you can get with it. So once you download it for free. for free this is what you'll see upon opening you can go ahead and hide this layer who the hell is Duran supply anyway it's really very straightforward there are six effects that you can choose from as you can see here in this text effects group you can see what each of those does just by turning on and off those groups or you can go ahead and open up this reference panel to see what each effect is supposed to look like. So effects one, two, three are meant for lighter colored or white slash gray text, like how I just previewed. And effects four through six are meant for color text. Although VHS text effect number six, you can pretty much use on any text you want, uh, colored or white. So you have a separate input for these two groups of effects. We have a smart object here for effects one, two, three, and a smart object for effects four through six to get your own text or logo in here 
here, simply open up the smart object that you want to use. So double click that thumbnail to open up the smart object. And here you can type out your text or you can even insert your logo by using this smart object right here. This is a smart object inside of the smart object. So smart object inception right here. But anyway, if you want to put your logo in here or pretty much any one color graphic, just open up this smart object and drop your logo or graphic right in here. Then just save this smart object and head back into the template. You can see that all of the effects that are controlled by that smart object have been updated with that text or logo. So effects one to three have now been updated with my logo and it would work the same way if I use the smart object for effects four through six. Now, side note, if you're using any of the colored text options, so any of the four through six effects, once you open up the smart object for that, you have to change the color by going into the color overlay of this text group here and just picking the color. So you can pick whatever color you want here. Just make sure you do this in obviously the layer styles of this group. Back on the actual template here, we also have this group up here called complementary effects, which is full of some noise and other textures that you can use to pretty much liven up this VHS text effect. So we have a number of really, really cool analog sort of glitchy looks here that we can turn on and off. We can also crank the opacity way up if we want more of a drastic effect or experiment with different blending modes if you really want to go crazy with this. These are all textures from a free pack I downloaded off of Behance and they were created by this guy, Zom Tendo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but go give him a follow on Instagram. That's at Z-O-M-B-T-E-N-D-O. -E Thank you for creating this free pack for everyone to use. And it really adds a nice little flair to this VHS effect template. And that's really it. Again, if you want to download this, head to the Durant Supply Instagram page and DM me the letters VHS and I'll send you a download link for this template. And just in case, if that's not working, you can head to DurantSupply.com and sign up for the mailing list all the way at the bottom of the website and you'll be emailed a link to all of my freebies which includes this VHS text effect template and that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you got anything of value from this video or if you just like the video, be sure to like the video. If you like me, subscribe to the channel. I post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer. Now I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.